candidates. Those questions are going to be answered. It's quite unfortunate. I've got to say that uh, we have also seen a lot of pensions to write. I, I think uh, it appears, Comrade mm -hmm. uh, people prefer propaganda than the truth. People prefer lies than the truth. Mm. It is my hope that uh, your statements and your words are not going to be misrepresented or, uh, repre uh, or uh, uh, interpreted by secondary sources to mean what you have not said, to represent what you have not represented. We have seen that and we have frowned at it. And I must say, uh, we are getting tired of comrades from the media that come here to grace our occasions like this. When they do come, Chef, they go and misrepresent our view. Uh, next time, we will feel that we really have no reason to have you here when it becomes a habit that after coming here to take information from the source and you go and misrepresent our views. It is abhorrible and those who know it, we have spoken to them individually, we have also written to them and we hope that this is the last time we are going to have such serious acrimonious relations. The us against them approach. We feel it doesn't work. Comrade Jinamas, the occasion is yours, uh, Comrade National Peace, to speak to the comrades. Over to you, sir. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Comrade Mugwadi. And uh, as you can see from the cast in front of you, I'm wearing two party heads. One is Secretary for Finance and also as Acting National PC, which... Uh, Comrade Chiangwa's presence is explaining my relationship with him as Secretary for Finance and then Comrade Wungwe uh, as Secretary, Deputy Secretary for Commissariat. Uh, we had a joint meeting of the Resource Mobilization Committee as well as a Commissariat Department meeting. Uh, what happened was that um, I called a meeting of provincial chairpersons today as Secretary for Finance to talk about resource mobilization. I had also lined up way back a meeting on Thursday of provincial chairpersons to get updates on the restructuring that is ongoing in ZANU-PF. Then we decided that we should have a joint meeting. So our meeting was a three-hour meeting, and it was very productive and very fruitful. A president at this meeting where the National Mobilization Resource Mobilization Committee, which, as you know now, is chaired by Dr. Philip Chiangwa, who was, as you know, appointed by His Excellency, the president, to chair this committee. Also present were members of his National Resource Mobilization Committee. Also present were all provincial chairpersons, provincial secretaries for finance, and also provincial fundraising committee chairpersons. Uh, these were appointed under the structure that Comrade Chiangwa is, uh, is running. We also asked and were present members of the national, the secretaries for finance from our national women's league and our national youth league. They also were here and of course we had the directors of, the, of finance, Comrade Mukhope and of course the director of uh, administration, Comrade Zora. Uh, the meeting, as I said, went very well. Uh, we advised, of course, that uh, Comrade Chiangwa and you will further elaborate on this. We are targeting 140 million US to raise, to finance many activities that we need to finance within our party, including the 2023 harmonized presidential parliamentary and uh, local authority elections. Uh, we are also raising money included in that 140 million US budget 
is the cost of running the party and cost of running its programs. So the committee which Comrade Shiangwa chaired gave each province a target of 14 million United States dollars. And we have since advised them that our expectation or rather directive is that each province should raise annually 5 million United States dollars. That is, between now and December, they should raise 5 million, which they should remit to part headquarters. Over and above what we are asking them to remit to the party headquarters, we are expecting that each province will meet in full the conference course. As you are aware, uh, we are going to run the upcoming annual people's conference virtually with the main theater being Bindura in March Central. And each province will be expected to meet the course of running its own virtual conference. And that we made very clear. And the reports we get is that as far as raising the resources for running their show, uh, that is going very, very well. Uh, because we do not want the name of the party to be tarnished, we have warned the, those who are going to participate in this exercise that when they undertake their tasks, they should not exhibit any conduct which brings the name of the Revolutionary Party into disrepute. They must never exhibit any disposition that borders on corrupt tendencies. Rather, their conduct should be exemplary and befitting of any officer representing this gigantic brand called ZANU PF. In short, in matters of money, they should be like Caesar's wife, beyond suspicion. Uh, and to this end, my department is going to draw up a document which will lay out the procedures that must be followed right in terms of receipting, in terms of banking, in terms of ac ac accountability, right through up to party headquarters. We are going to do the document which everyone must follow who is going to participate in this exercise. Uh, the chairman and you will elaborate has also made it clear that uh, the, uh, the contributions can be in cash or kind. And you will elaborate fully on this matter. I also took the opportunity to to advise them that as Secretary for Finance, I started an investment committee in April this year. Uh, we are looking for suitable uh, uh, opportunities of investment so that the party can invest and be assured as we go forward of regular income. Uh, currently, we do not have, and we want to, we used to, uh, and then it died, and we wanted to make sure that we resuscitate the culture of having investments which can allow us to have continuous, regular cash flow into our coffers in order to run the party and its programs. That was on the fundraising uh, committee, and so far we are very pleased with the efforts that, in fact, have gone into this matter. On the restructuring that is uh, taking place countrywide, I'm very pleased with the work that provinces have done in this matter. My focus and, uh, has been on making sure that we come up with cells of integrity that which are populated by real people and are not fake. And on that score, I'm very pleased with the exercise that has been undertaken in terms of cell restructuring. All the people, even where there are some disputes, when I ask, how is the cell restructuring going on? They say everything is going well as far as the cell restructuring. We started having problems of sort when we started setting up the districts. 
but even those overall i think that uh, overall i can say that 95 96 97% of the work done has been very good we have some 3 4% where we still need to redo the work and we will not hesitate to redo the work and in this regard i've already made interventions with respect to some four districts in Epworth, we are going to uh, we we have dissolved the structures there so that uh, the work can be redone and restarted afresh and we have already appointed Chitungwiza one dcc to go and do uh, the work that i've assigned them to do in Epworth. Epworth comes under zone five Chitungwiza is zone one uh, we felt that we should not have the zone five doing their own correction or a neighboring two neighboring uh, zone basically doing the uh, the corrections that we wanted to see happen also in mutare central we have i've directed that gutu dcc and bikita dcc must go and do the cellular restructuring in Mutare Central. Uh, I have some misgivings about the nature of the work that has been done there, and I want to be assured that uh, the work is done uh, on a proper basis. These teams will report directly uh, to, to me, to the commissariat here, uh, and they are not reporting to the respective chairpersons of the places where they are going to to do the work i'm also and i've advised this uh, to our provincial chairpersons that i'm insisting that the cells must be data captured and that work is probably gone maybe 85 percent complete in terms of data capturing the cells i'm also insisting that when branches are set up the composition of the branch executives should also be data captured. Similarly, when party districts are set up, the district executive committees, the composition, should also be data captured. Uh, this, I'm assured, uh, is going to be, uh, to, be, to be done, and I'm sure that uh, it will be done uh, well. The reports that i've received so far with respect to the cellular restructuring is, is is very 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 good I, they've made very good progress they report that 77,590 cells have been set up uh, which will give us a membership of some three million eight hundred seventy nine thousand five hundred uh, i must say this figure is less what we have rejected. There are some obvious cells which were sent to us which on the face of it did not conform to our format and we have had to reject it, to reject them. And we will still go to scrutinize whether or not this rise up or uh, conform to our format which we, which we, we gave them. Uh, we have advised the the provincial chairpersons that after the annual people's conference the commissariat is going to conduct workshops of at dcc and pcc levels these workshops will be uh, to uh, to advise the workshops the dccs on what their natural endowments are what devolution means and what is gdp I think that you'll be aware that His Excellency has been pushing the economic agenda very strongly and the results are there now for all of us to see. And what I want our party structures to, to get themselves acquainted to is that they should understand what devolution means. They should understand what natural endowments are in their respective administrative districts which can be exploited economically for the betterment of their 
districts. I also want our party structures to understand what we mean by GDP. What His Excellency is doing is to provoke competition between respective administrative districts. Competition is what will make this economy grow. If we commit to grow our GDPs, it will be very good for the overall uh, picture in our, in our economy. So we are going to have a, a workshops to basically make a study of this. What are the natural endowments in each respective districts? Uh, what is devolution? What is GDP? Um, there are issues which um, I also have undertaken. I am going to go to the commissary department is going to go into them. They have come to with, uh, issues have come to the notice of the commissary department of conflicts between uh, communal farmers and miners. Uh, we are promising as the commissary department that we are going to go into it and to make sure that those conflicts are resolved. Uh, we want a win-win situation for the communal farmers and also for exploitation of any minerals which may be there. Uh, I, we, I was to have visited uh, Muzi in Makar. There is some conflict there between miners and communal farmers which the party will go into uh, to make sure that the problem is resolved. There has also been re reported to us a problem in Uzumba Maramba Fungwe, uh, again conflict between uh, communal farmers and miners in terms of what are the limits of the farmers, what are the limits of the communal farmers, who has got what rights over what piece of land. Those clearly the commissary department will go into and make sure that we've got a, a solution uh, to, to the matter. We also reported, of course, that uh, we have received timelessly all the delegates to our conferences, both in Bindura and also at the, com at the provincial uh, conferences. Uh, the delegations list have come to us. We have forwarded these to the Department of Security for accreditation, and I'm aware that accreditation is already uh, started. Um, um, we, we, we are also considering that uh, over the next few days, uh, I should be sending or deploying rather uh, political members to address our PCC and acquaint themselves and try to give guidance on any problems that may have cropped up arising from the restructuring that is ongoing. And I'll also be sending central committee members to DCCs again to get themselves, acquaint themselves with any problems that may have been encountered, encountered in the restructuring of our party. And of course, they will then give reports uh, to, to us over this matter. Overall, I must say that as commissariat, a uh, government has already made our task as commissariat very easy. When we see and witness and observe the length and breadth of this country and see what socio-economic achievements are being scored and achieved by the Second Republic, uh, our work is almost 70% done is commissariat. People see the good work that is being done and are talking about it and they see that the future is looking bright uh, for, for them. So that makes the work of the commissariat department uh, very easy. We don't have to just uh, shout slogans. We have a lot of content that we can give to our uh, to our party creditors. Let me also conclude the issue about uh, uh, commissariat work by saying that um, we uh, are not surrendering the urban areas to the opposition. On the contrary, 
we are going to make massive inroads into all urban centers to win the population to ZANU-PF, to make the population in all urban areas that the future lies with ZANU-PF and not the opposition run corrupt councils that have run down the services in their respective areas. And there will be some initiatives which in due course will be announcing where and what we are going to do with respect to what strategies we are going to employ in, in town. So we are not letting go. We will defend our rural stronghold, but we are going to make spirited, spirited, spirited inroads into urban areas. We want to win the urban areas so that we can restore service delivery as it was before MDC came into the picture in 2000. Those who have long memories will remember that we had viable local authorities countrywide until the MDC won the councils in 2000. Then they've run down and only specializing in trying to blame their shortcomings on central government. Now we'll not give them that chance. So I thought I should make reference to that. Finally, just to remind you that um, 25th of October is a SADC sanctions day. And we are very grateful to SADC as well as to the AU and to those countries in the international community who have stood by us through thick and thin. As you are aware, on the continent, until this initiative from SADC, we were totally isolated. And for the first time now, SADC and Africa is speaking with one voice over the issue of sanctions. They are illegal. They were not authorized by the United Nations Security Council. They are unilateral and illegal, and they must be removed unconditionally. And we want to rally our population to make their voices heard that sanctions must go unconditionally, that they must be lifted and removed unconditionally. We do not deserve that they were, in the first place, that they were, we did not deserve the sanctions to have been imposed against us. And our crime was basically to reclaim that which our people died for, to reclaim our land. And so we make no apologies for taking back our land. Uh, any revolutionary party would have traveled that path. And we are very proud that we succeeded in taking back our land. We now have as a country control over all our resources, whether it's rivers, mountains, minerals, natural resources, they are now under our control. And it is now that we can plan for the fruitful and viable exploitation of those resources for the betterment of the economy and the livelihoods of our people. I think I'll stop there, Comrade Mugwadi, uh, for now. Unless there are any questions, I'll ask, answer any questions. Uh, thank you very much, Comrade uh, Active PC and Secretary for Finance. Uh, I think the emphasis has been put on the restructuring exercise, the resource mobilization, our state of preparedness ahead of the conference, and most importantly, on the issue of sanctions. Save just to say that one, wherever Tanga uh, you know those people. Each time when there is a special visit to this country, you know what they are good at. Those theatrics, those drama quiz are at it again, Chef, but I will not want to exhaust your time. Let me give the, 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 the colleagues from the media an opportunity to, to interrogate. Uh, over to you, our esteemed colleagues from from the meeting. Any questions, clarifications? And uh, when I say so, 
Maybe I should have given I should have given the chairman of the fundraising committee to compliment what I said on the fundraising before we can. Oh yes, yeah, it's a, yeah, so that he has a football man. <laughs> He's no longer football. He's no now football. Uh, money. <laughs> um, thank you very much. I think for you, most of you, you will appreciate that 27 years ago I was having the same position, but now it's different. Um, the same person who was Secretary for Finance then 27 years ago is now the President of the Republic. <laughs> and I served you know, under him for eight years. Um, he was my mentor, even the AAG you hear of was started you know, in his office. So uh, that's just the tidbit of the relationship between me and his Excellency. Um, I want to say that I am happy with what the National Commissar has said and also the Secretary for Finance. Um, what it is is that I will quote my Wungwe's vote of thanks speech uh, in which uh, she did mention uh, very importantly that uh, even when you are churchgoers, you make a contribution to the church to ensure that it's running expenses uh, and whatever else expenditure is met from the process coming from church members. ZANU-PF is the biggest party, maybe one of the oldest parties on the continent. It is a people that have endured a hell of a lot, especially when you look at the sanctions, the number of years sanctions have been on, on us especially me, who is now 62, uh, you know, from the time of Rhodesia. There were sanctions, you know, and post-independent sanctions, you know. Uh, I've never enjoyed life without sanctions. <laughs> so I'm used to it, you know. But I've also learned ways and means of surviving, and including my children and so forth. Um, uh, we have solutions from time to time as ingenious people in Zimbabwe. Uh, I am the chief fundraiser for zanu -PF. A total fundraising for Zanupia, from buying tissue to cleaning this place and putting <laughs> lights. It's my responsibility. And that is total. And I can tell you that we have started very well. We have started very well to the point that today was important for, for the fundraising efforts because I then invited the provincial chairpersons together with their sectors of finance, including the chairpersons of mass resource mobilization, who are provincial chairpersons who came. The intention was to try and synchronize the national efforts, provincial efforts, as well as those that would be carried out by district members who are fundraising, or individual fundraisers in ZANU-PF who are fundraising, so that each and every person who is putting their money, who is giving us a donation, is receipted. It's very, very important. Um, as any funds that may not be accounted for may result in us, you know, not really exceeding the 140 million. We want to exceed the 140 million. I've further on, you know, uh, uh, said that uh, the contributions currently being made, which are towards the national conference, which was part of the uh, uh, budget, budgetary uh, target in the 140 million, a uh, sale restructuring branch, district, and the national conference are part of that, including the 2023 elections. So, if there are any contributions being made in material form, be it cash and in kind, it's all going to be given a value so that each province is credited for its contribution. In the, in the case of the province hosting our conference like Mashonal and Central, they've recently had some some you know material, some uh, 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 materials or stocks for, for people to feed from in the conference uh, donated, and they've raised that uh, with with me. So if the the donation is two hundred thousand, so be it that we credit it to their uh, five million this year, and and so forth. So each and every province who may want to donate or have had donations by way of uh, beasts and or anything be it vehicles that I'm beginning to start hearing that they are being donated, we will have a value for each of that and still account for it. 
I can safely tell you that we've started very well. Uh, I don't announce any figures, not at all. The figures are announced by this man sitting right next to me here. He's my boss when it comes to the decision. So I could tell you a figure of X, whereas the figure has changed because some people are putting money, you understand? So he will be the only one to give a certificate of balance. But all I can tell you is that the exercise has started in earnest and we are doing extremely well uh, when it comes to, you know, really penetrating uh, uh, the market to get money. At no time can I assure you this. In my experience as having been a, a campaign strategist, uh, having two caps of calf presidents in football, <laughs> <laughs> being sworn in as president, uh, do I see uh, this next 2023 election giving MDC or any other contender a chance? Okay. I, I want a contestation and the resources that ensures that the candidate which we are working for with my team excels considerably preponderantly keeps a distance from the contest the other adversary mm -hmm. uh, that's exactly my uh, my mission mm -hmm. to ensure there are enough resources that candidates of zanu pf including my president uh, as, as, as one without doubt ends down mm -hmm. the 2023 election that's mm -hmm. all i have to say to you Thank you very much, Chairman. Masizo, we are not going up in the moon. And uh, <laughs> so the burning question is your opportunity. Thank you very much, Commissioner uh, Chairman of the Finance Committee. I still prefer to call you the football man. You are very successful. Two teams of cup presidents uh, from the other one from Madagascar. Is it Madagascar? In the purchase from mm. South Africa. But let me tell you something. Even if we play football and win it, and win like I used to, and we take cups, no president of the African continent has ever been sworn in because they were playing good football. You understand? So it doesn't help my president. That's, <laughs> that's why I said let other people do it. Thank you. Yeah. So, the opportunity for questions. Thanks for the teaser. Comrade Chairman. Yes. Blessed him, Chairman. <coughs> Uh, thank you. My name is Blessed Bihlam from Hatton Soul TV and Radio. Um, I just want to find out why the ZAMPF running budget is being quoted in United States dollars when you, the, the, the US the ruling party have insisted that we should be using the local currency. And then, secondly, I just also wanted to find out what is your budget for running the conference because I understand 140 million is for running the party in every and up to the 2023 general elections, but what is your budget? Mm -hmm. Yes, that person is yeah. not if you take a note, Comrade. Yeah. Person. Mm -hmm. I mean, Comrade, acting uh, PC, my apologies. Yes, any other person? Yes, my dear. Pay for what? Cause mayhem Cause mayhem in Machine. Yeah. <coughs> I'm sure the XPC okay. is nothing. Okay. Uh, any other question? Any other burning questions before people go to I'm sure. Last time somebody had to say after Comrade Sinamas announced the, the finance committee, the <coughs> chairperson of the finance committee in your committee, there was a headline read from that press conference that <laughs> Uh, bankrupt is now going for broke, forces vendors to pay. <laughs> yeah. Where did that come from? I don't know where that came from, but I'm telling you how people are married to lies. Mm -hmm. Some people are married yeah. to lies. It's unfortunate. Blessed him, Chang. Is that a follow up question, not an opinion? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Director, for inviting me to put an opinion, but I, I want to take the bait. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I just wanted to find out uh, 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 sector for the commissary, acting sector for the commissary. We saw, we have heard that there was violence uh, in Tal uh, as the elections of Zambia. Uh, are, you, are you aware of this? And uh, can you just give us detail as to what exactly happened in Tal? Okay, I can now answer. Yeah, it's yeah. over to you. Uh,
very much, uh, uh, blessed Mklanga. Uh, I, I thought that we do our um, budgets in both U.S. and Zimbabwe, and that's what we are doing. I thought that is official in U.S. dollars, and, and in fact, we, you know, weekly there is an auction, as you know, and the auction tells us how much is what. A column of US dollars and a column of the Zimbabwe dollar equivalent. That's how we, we frame our budgets. And I don't see anything the matter with that. Uh, obviously, uh, because of the auction rate, because the equivalent in Zim dollars must be at the auction rate. And where it changes, sometimes it changes by a comma, uh, point 0.1, point 0.2. That reflects, of course, the, the Zim dollar equivalent. So I, I don't see what the issue is there about. Uh, the annual People's Conference budget, we are still working. Uh, and in fact, we've been having meetings almost every day. Uh, the last one was yesterday to try to, to refine our budgets. At least what we can say is that we've received the bids from all departments. They come as bids. But uh, as you know, they are asking for the moon in the sky. Uh, when the resources are not uh, that so we have a technical committee which is chaired by comrade Zora, the principal uh, director the ad director of administration to come through these bids and make sure that we have realistic uh, bids which we can fund and that is the exercise which 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 are which are going so what figures we have is basically my bids are recover my departments uh, like uh, but don't forget what i said in my earlier statement each province is going to meet the full course of its conference any delegates going to provincial conferences the cost of their accommodation food whatever you will be met fully by the province but additionally as comrade chiangwa has said additionally we are expecting each province to contribute to the overall national effort, 14 million United States dollars, which we have divided into five dollars annually for 2021, 2022, and 2023. Uh, I, I liked the issue about vendors. I don't know, was it Mugwadi? It was not me, it was one no, of the members who presented. Post our press conference. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, but for, for, for what, he, what he needs to know is, when we are looking for the money, we are looking from all our supporters. And I know that some of our supporters are vendors. In fact, for your information, the Vendors Association has approached us so that they have become an affiliate organization of Zanupir. So we are not shy to receive any contributions from vendors. It's not anything that we that we want to, to hide. If they give us well and good. Similarly, we we are we look at artisanal miners is our fishing point in terms of raising of resources. We also look at A1, A2 farmers. Those who have made us into this sanctions issue. The sanctions is all about defending, attacking those beneficiaries. Why did you benefit for under the land reform? So we do expect that they know and they would know that the revolution needs to be defended. And obviously we also look forward that they will also contribute to, to, to us. Uh, similarly, we also look for the churches, the traditional leadership, we will not say no to any resource coming from our people because they know the importance of political stability. They know it. They see what on their TVs, what is happening in other countries, in other jurisdictions. 
And we don't want those things to happen here. And only ZANU-PF can guarantee political stability in this country. Not sell out parties, mm. which hobnob with the enemy, mm. and sell out their sovereignty. They ask for sanctions against their own people. Mm. They oppose the land redistribution exercise, even 21 years after the act was done. They continue in that mind frame. Mm. So we, we are saying, basically, all people and we will rally behind the Sun PF and we call upon them to contribute so that their party is viable and is able to run its programs. The violence in Mutare, to be honest, I don't know what happened. My problem is that each time I ask those who are there, you would think that they were all not there. I'm getting different versions. Different versions, in fact, about five or so. Just asking pertinent questions, what happened, and so on. So I don't want to, 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 to say anything where, which has no factual basis. But in short, I will say it's a matter that is for the police. I think you are better advised to ask the police what actually happened. And of course, in due course, if there were any arrest made, and if there is going to be any prosecutions, we will know. What we can say, Zanupif, is that we say no to violence. We say no to lawlessness, to unruly behavior. We say no. But who has done it and why? I think that will leave uh, to the police uh, uh, on that basis. The Mashingo uh, incident, which has been reported, to be honest, I, I'm not yet fully in the picture of what happened, but I was not, I'm not surprised because each time that we have a high-ranking foreign visitor from the UN or from whatever, I was expecting something. I was not sure what exactly was the opposition going to do, <laughs> but clearly I was expecting something was going to happen, especially after the arrive, arrival of the UN rapporteur on on Sanchez, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I was expecting something. Whether someone would be kidnapped, uh, obviously a stage managed kidnapping, someone who stage managed being assaulted, I was expecting something. And that person would have to be of high, high, high level in the opposition so that it can attract the necessary adverse publicity they want uh, to be interpreted against Zimbabwe and uh, our record on human rights. Uh, but what I have been able to piece together, uh, are maybe two things. You know, democracy is about being allowed freedom of expression. Like I'm exercising my freedom of expression. But it's also about freedom of receiving information. If you, do, you were not here, I cannot go and send a, a policeman to force you to come and listen to me. And what I hear happened in Vic, in Mashingo, was that the opposition leader was trying to impose himself on an audience which did not want to listen to him. It had no right, he had no right to force people to listen to him. He had a right to address people, but only those who are willing to be addressed by him. In this case, my information is that the villagers did not want to be addressed by him. For obvious reasons. If you listen to a madman, mm. you become part of his caste. Mm. <laughs> yes. You be portrayed mm. as part of his caste. Mm. He will then go ahead and say, no, 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 I have lots of support, <laughs> which he does not have. Mm. So our people, our zanu people, will have a right to say, until the edukuti utawri nesu, until the angu. It's my right. Jino yo uka uya kunini uka atibedzi, njiterere, njiterere. I have reason to be angry. So that is the first point that I want to, to emphasize. Don't the opposition leaders should be advised strongly 
not to impose themselves on anybody, on anybody. For instance, we are going to issue a secular. As you know, uh, that is a commissariat. As you know, the countries which impose sanctions are funding a phalanx of NGOs to undermine ZANPF, to topple ZANPF from power. And they are doing all sorts of things under the banner of democracy, which is not true. Foreigners should never fund processes which are internal. That is a clear violation of the sovereignty of a people. Anyway, they are doing that. Now, what I am going to do is, or the commissariat will do, we will write a letter to say to our people, to our supporters, mm. when, you re when you hear of this name, please don't associate with them. Because the freedom of association, you cannot then force them to say, no, 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 you must associate with me, whether you like it or not. Mm. So we will be writing a directive to say, mentioning the NGOs, which we know are the proxies of countries which wanted to topple Zanpiv government, will tell our supporters, don't have anything to do with those people. Don't associate with them. They are no good. They are to no good. They are going to bring misery to you. Don't be complicit in your own destruction, in your own demolition. The other point I wanted to say is, I hear from the reports I get that, in fact, the opposition leader and his bodyguards fired shots into the air. You, you know, the last time we had shots in the air were during the liberation struggle. Now, if there is anything that can agitate people to make them angry, is trying to demonstrate your power through firing a gun. And then you must expect the consequences. You are basically asking people to defend themselves. And when they fire people uh, guns into the air, what was the reason? Clearly, I want you to say this, the firing into the air by the bodyguards of the opposition leader concerned is abominable. Is part of the stage managing that I referred to. As I mentioned earlier, I knew there was going to be stage managing. What I just didn't know is what nature of the stage managing. Now we now know. As we go out of this meeting, we now know. Maybe this is not the last stage managing. They are perpetrating uh, to, in order to besmirch the reputation, the human rights reputation of ZANU-PF. It may not be the last, but clearly, it's very clear that this was stage managing to create incidences that justify fake news reports of human rights violations against Zimbabwe. I think that's all I can say on these issues at this stage. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Congress spokesperson. I mean, Comrade uh, Acting Commissar. Uh, you know, Chef, I'm sorry. I sorry, was, sorry. Uh, I'm a bit addicted <laughs> to uh, that uh, interaction of last year. Uh, my apologies for that. Uh, I must say, uh, make an announcement that, uh, to the members of the media, our colleagues. Uh, those who want to cover the National Annual People's Conference, you are welcome. On condition that you apply to do so through the Department of Information and Publicity so that we can process your accreditation as early as possible. So I think we have issued a circular to you. We hope to see your responses the sooner the better so that we do not have problems running into conference. But I must also say that those addicted to fake news like what Comrade Acting PCS said, those are addicted to lying in our name, taking advantage of their right uh, to represent the views of others through the pen, and then choose deliberately to lie in our name in order to soil the image of the leadership in the party. I must say this conference, um, this department will facilitate the attendance of journalists, media houses, media practitioners, but 
Certainly, it cannot facilitate the attendance of political activists belonging to other political parties disguised or pretending to be the players in the meeting. Uh, this department will not do that. So, we'll facilitate the meeting to attend. Members of the media are welcome. Thank you. And maybe I, may I also mention that I've recorded what I said. <laughs> yes, which is good. Which is fair. So when I find that I misquoted, then I would just tell Mugwadi to say this is no good. He, this journalist is not ethical. He has no respect for the truth. He is actually on the payroll of the whoever. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, PC. Thank you. Thank you. Team PCs. In fact, everything was PC except myself. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Are you? Thank you. Thank you. Blessed Mklang. Mklang. Yes, yes. Blessed, how are you? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. No, nice to see you again. Always a pleasure. Who is a place? Yeah. Who is a, place? A, a press conference is not complete yeah. without you. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you very much. Thank you. Many of us stop streaming.